What's good, y'all? It's your Ross back at again with another video. So we're gonna check out revealing the secrets of WWE's most iconic moments. Uh, I do like these videos when you're able to see how they did some of these legendary iconic moments or segments where you know you don't know how they did it at the time, but you were just excited or shocked, and then you find out years later, oh, this was done and to prepare for this to happen or whatnot. I love videos like this. Um, for some people, they feel like, oh, it, it breaks the illusion of the wrestling world. Me personally, I, I don't think it does. I, I think it's even interesting to, you know, find a way to, you know, make certain situations look way more believable than they should be once you find out the truth on how they were done. So we're gonna get right into this one, man. Appreciate all the love and support you guys showing on the channel. Let's get right into this bad boy, man. No WWE fan will ever forget this. Of course. Classic. 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 This is all planned. So Hold on, y'all. I gotta get rid of this box. Don't know why I was doing that. There we go. Sorry about that, y'all. <laughs> how did WWE pull it off? Years after the stunt, Big Show came clean and revealed how it was done. WWE had airbags under the ring that were inflated once Lesnar oh. and Big Show got on the turnbuckle. You can even see a piece of the equipment used to inflate the bags on the floor earlier in the match. These airbags were only on one side of the ring, and they were inflated just enough to raise that part off the ground. You can notice the ring post shaking after Big Show and Brock Lesnar push off the top rope. The impact oh. of the suplex caused the ring post to flip, and then the production team had the airbags deflate, causing the ring to fall to the ground. That's why there's a slight delay from when the ring post flipped to the ring actually falling. Wow. Oh, that's for, that's interesting. I never knew how mechanically they did it. I just always thought the spot was fucking insanely cool. So <laughs> yeah. once Brock and Show got on the that's ring buckles, dope. the airbags underneath the ring were actually holding it up, not the ring post. Oh. On SmackDown in 2009, okay. Edge was hosting his show, The Cutting Edge. The radar superstar was supposed to have Jeff Hardy as a guest, but things didn't go according to plan when Hardy was blasted by his own pyro. Mm -hmm. I remember this. Convincing, it was a stage stunt and part of the show. First, the sparks that hit Jeff Hardy weren't hot at all. A special kind of grain was used that doesn't hurt or burn when touched. Oh, wow. With other pyrotechnics, they were carefully placed so that Hardy was close enough that it looked like it hit him, but far enough away that it didn't do anything. Wow. Jeff Hardy also poured water on his head and body before coming out to keep his hair and clothes from burning. That's crazy. I didn't know how they did that either. I remember watching that. I was like, oh, whoa, this is, is he all right? They sold this too. One of the scariest WWE moments was when Jake Roberts started terrorizing Macho Man Randy Savage mm -hmm. and his wife, Miss Elizabeth. With the it snake. began during Savage and Elizabeth's wedding reception, where Roberts gifted the newlyweds a live cobra. To keep everyone safe, WWE didn't use a real snake, at least when people were around. When you see the shot with the cobra and people in it, the snake is actually a rubber toy. To make oh. it convincing, WWE filmed some tight shots with a real cobra oh, and okay. then edited them in later. That worked fine since there was no live audience, but what about when Roberts attacked Randy Savage with a live cobra in the ring? Yeah, the definitely got a sense of that. one of the most venomous snakes in the entire world, and a bite from it could kill someone in 30 minutes. Of course, Savage didn't die, so how did they do it? Well, that was a real King Cobra, and it did really bite the Macho Man. However, the Cobra's venom glands had been removed prior to the stunt. The oh. snake still had its veins, though, which is why Macho Man's arm started bleeding during the bite. Yeah, bro. Shout out to them actually just willingly doing that with a live animal, having him actually get bit. Like, yeah, the venom glands was gone, but no, he legit got bit by a snake. That's wild, bro. That's it's a different time in wrestling. Holy. Despite this, Macho Man was rushed to the hospital five days later with a fever. In oh. an ironic turn of events, the Cobra died 12 days after biting Savage. The snake may have been devenomized, but Macho Man wasn't. Backlash still Whoa, not damn. He still ended up getting sick. Still, damn. Ooh. Nah, bro. I'm... Oh, nah, I'm, I'm good. <laughs> I ended with a bang when the Big Show choke slammed John Cena. Uh huh, remember this one too. What's the secret here? First, the glass that Cena hit wasn't actually glass, mm -mm. it was actually made out of sugar glass, yep. which is created by heating water and sugar. It looks like, uh, you know, speaking of glass, Jack Perry wanted to use real glass. No, man, use sugar glass, bro. You can tell the story that way. Using real glass. <laughs> could legitimately hurt you even more and it's dangerous you should glass <laughs> 
real glass, but breaks much more easily and doesn't cut you. The yeah. sugar is also the reason the glass stuck to John Cena's body after mm -hmm. he threw it. As for the spotlight, the inside was fitted with padding and foam yeah. to cushion the landing. You can see the differences in these two images. As for the explosion, pyrotechnic charges were set on the side and back of the spotlight. This allowed for a big blast while John Cena was shielded by the inside of the mm -hmm. spotlight. In the lead up to his WrestleMania 21 match against sumo wrestler Aki Bono, Big Show demonstrated his strength by flipping over a Jeep. It was impressive, but there was a trick to pull off this stunt. SmackDown did not air live, so when Big Show went to push the Jeep, a production member came out with a car jack oh. to lift the vehicle. This raised the Jeep to a level that yeah. Big Show could more easily push it over. You can see when the camera cuts away from Big Show, the vehicle is noticeably a few inches higher than in the last shot. Speaking of Big Show, this looks like it. I mean, it's still impressive to be able to still push it over, so. Uh, I think they did the same thing with Braun Strowman with the, uh, I think it was the ambulance. Roman Reigns was in the ambulance. <laughs> And he had, he had it on like, they had it on like some stilts or whatever. Like, so it's easier to tip over because they had something under it where he, once he lifted up, it can kind of fall over a little bit more easier. But it was similar to what they did there, but the visuals still look good. Hurt. Pink! <laughs> How did they pull this off without Big Show suffering serious damage? Well, that's an obvious sledgehammer. The wood is real, but the head is made out of rubber. So uh, it, painful, it didn't hurt at all. In his later years, Triple H started using a real sledgehammer. However, uh -huh. he always put his hand over the head to keep the person he was hitting safe. Yeah, so it is crazy to know in earlier years it was just a rubber head, but the, the, the actual wood handle was real. And then they start using a real sledgehammer. It's just they put it. He would put his hand over the sledgehammer. <laughs> to win an Inferno match, you have to set your opponent on fire. This is an classic match stunt because the fire is real. Yeah. And yet, no one has been seriously injured, so how is it done? Kane spilled the beans in his 2019 autobiography. During the first Inferno match in 1998, <clears throat> The Undertaker fought Kane. The first trick is that both men were coated in flame retardant chemicals before going to the ring, but there was much more to it. As the match went on, Kane and Taker ended up on the outside of the squared circle, where Kane was knocked down. The dead man then walked to the entrance stage and started fighting Kane's manager, Paul Bear. <laughs> While this was going on, Kane crawled under the ring, where a few WWE production members were hiding. The Big Red Machine was wearing a special costume, where the right sleeve could be taken off. After this was removed, Kane replaced it with a sleeve made out of flame retardant material. The crew mm. members then applied cooling gel with an accelerant on his right arm. You can see the outline once the Undertaker returns uh. to the ring. After that, the big red machine was pushed into the flames and his sleeve was on fire. Kane quickly walked backstage and once the camera was off of him, the fire was put out. WWE used the same trick eight yep. years later when Kane fought MVP in an Inferno match. I remember watching this too. I was like, yo, this is fucking insanity, bro. This was so insane, and <laughs> I enjoyed every every second of it. Even though the match wasn't that really good, it's just the fact that this was actually happening, and someone was getting set on fire, and MVP ended up getting set on fire. <laughs> Once the two were out of the ring, MVP crawled under the ring skirt. During that time, a production member quickly applied cooling gel to MVP's back. This is why Kane randomly stalled for a moment before uh -huh. his opponent back out. Then, almost immediately after, MVP was pushed towards the fire and set ablaze. That shit to was demonstrate crazy. His strength, the great Kali crushed a cantaloupe and watermelon with just his bare hands. While Kali was strong, WB used some tricks to help him out. The uh -huh. watermelon was cut on the back, which is why uh -huh. she started out the moment Kali applies pressure. That's also why the watermelon splits in the back, since that's where it was weak. Mm -hmm. WB used a similar trick years later when Braun Strowman crushed an apple with one hand. You can faintly see a cut on the apple, which made it easier for Strowman to smash. Yeah. John Cena and Batista's 2010 rivalry saw them face off in an I Quit match. One of the most extreme moments was when Batista placed Cena near the entrance stage and backed into him with a car. Mm. How did Cena stay safe? Well, there was a solid black box conveniently next to the car. Yeah. Once the camera crew switched to an angle where you couldn't see behind the vehicle, Cena yeah. crawled out of the way. <laughs> that boy, John, you're not about to hit me. Well, too, had fans not been able to see Cena poke out from behind the black box. Yeah. One of the classic WWE moments is when a wrestler goes to the barricade. Mm -hmm. Now, what are the tricks? 
First, WB barricades are padded from top to bottom to make them as safe as possible. Second, the barricades are all small individual sections that are linked together. Before the big spot, WB's production crew loosens the links on the section of the barricade yep. that the wrestlers are going to hit. This not only causes that part of the barricade to go down with ease, but also keeps the rest <clears throat> of the barricades standing upright. Yeah, I kind of figured it's one section that they loosen up. And obviously they know where to hit it because if you hit the other one, you may concuss yourself <laughs> or hurt yourself. So that one's loosened up to give away. So that way it gives the illusion like look at look how much force they use to, you know, break through it. There's more to it though. More often than not, wrestlers will break through the piece of the barricade that's in the timekeeper's area. This is so fans don't get in the way or accidentally knock the barricade over. Mm -hmm. However, when WWE wants to have wrestlers break through a side of the barricade where fans are, they won't allow real paying fans to sit in that area. Uh. Instead, the company uses extras, typically local independent wrestlers not signed with WWE. Okay. They know what's going to happen and not only keep the real fans safe, but also get the exact reaction WWE wants. When Mark Henry slams Sheamus through the barricade, you can actually see a young LA Knight in the crowd. Wow, Remember? I think we did see that clip. Oh, that's, that's crazy. <laughs> Look at him now. <laughs> classic WWE spot is breaking through the steel cage. These are similar <laughs> to the barricades. WWE keeps one part of the cage very loose, only uh -huh. held by an easily breakable piece. The wrestlers also purposely avoid interacting with that part of the cage until it's time for the spot. Uh -huh. These things are so easy to break that the cage can start to fall before the wrestlers touch it. As seen in this legendary spot between Bobby Lashley and Umaga. Yep. On the topic of breaking things, a wrestler going through the ring is always... And that's always... That was one of my favorite spots. When Bobby Lashley jumped through the cage to attack Umaga, that was such a cool spot. I remember watching that. Awesome spot. But how is it done? Former WWE wrestler Dean Ambrose, a.k.a. John Moxley, revealed in his autobiography that at every televised WWE show, there's always someone under the ring. This person tightens cables, makes sure weapons are in the right spot, pushes in cars trampoline out for his entrance, and more. <laughs> Before a wrestler is going to be slammed through the ring, this crew member will remove the wooden boards and support where the wrestler is going to land. The foam padding is kept in place, so the ring retains its shape. Like with the steel cage, wrestlers are careful to avoid the loose section of the ring until it's time for the spot. Mm -hmm. not finished oh my yet. God, the running power oh one of the biggest and it does look is it is a cool visual all of a sudden you see them fall through the ring or whatnot and i've always wanted to know how are they able to do that well it makes sense having somebody under the ring loosening things up i always thought that was a cool visual to see when it's done correctly omg moments was seen 77 year old may young yeah this is wild it was a high risk stunt but there were some safety precautions taken first the tables were on top of an inflated crash pad uh. which Bubba Ray also took the front of the impact to keep May safe. Uh -huh. Immediately after the landing, Mae Young also squeezed Bubba's hand to signal that she was okay. Uh, WWE wrestlers okay. actually use a number of hand signals to communicate yep. to find out what they are and what they mean. I think we've seen this, this one video. before. But yeah, nah, that's, that's, I never knew. I thought she just went through it. <laughs> I thought she, Mae Young, uh, <laughs> I was like, you know what? I'm cool with it. Put me through a table. I don't care. But obviously there was a crash pad and... Uh, Bubba did make sure that she was as safe as possible. And, uh, yeah, man, that was pretty dope. That was pretty damn dope. I love videos like this inform you on how certain things happen, man. That was pretty interesting, man. So comment down below. Let me know what is, like, the, shock, the most shocking revelation from this video that you didn't know where you was like, oh, so that's how they did it. Let me know down below. But I appreciate all the love and support you guys have showed on the channel. Road to 150K. And I'm still here on the speed of YouTube wrestling champion of the world. Appreciate y'all keeping me. See you on the next one. Peace.